again and welcome to another Mordian Glory bolt action video. In today's video, I want to take you through step by step my 1000 point army list for the Germans. This list is designed for both beginner and intermediate players. If you're someone who's getting into the game for the first time and maybe you're thinking of starting with the Germans but you're not sure where to start, hopefully this will be able to point you in the right direction. Or perhaps you've already played a little bit of bot action, but you've got a different faction. Maybe you've got something like the Japanese or the Italians on the Axis side. Or maybe you're an Allies player who's got some British or Americans, but you're thinking of coming over and trying out the bad guys of World War II. In both of these cases, this list should be a good place for you to start. I would say that this list, however, is probably going to be a little bit basic for veteran players of bot action. It's not overly meta. It's not got a lot of those choices that you will find in competitive lists. Much rather, it is designed to be a solid, balanced list that you can take into most friendly pickup games. And you should be able to have a good time and equip yourself very well. And as we're going through the list unit by unit, I'll explain some of my thoughts and rationale for including certain squads. At the same time, I'll give you an overall idea of the tactics that I plan to employ with this force as well. And at the very end of the video, I'll give you an idea of what boxes you need to buy to put this list together. But with all of that said, now let us get into the army list proper. And we'll begin with the right hand side. Now we have got two units of veteran German grenadiers. Both of these squads are going to have two LMGs in them. And we're also going to have a Panzerfaust in one of the squads. That's just because we had five points left over at the end of the list. Now, these squads are designed to be hard as nails. They're going to be dug into cover. And their main job is going to act as the bulwark. In a lot of bolt action missions, there's going to be a situation where you need to defend. Or you're going to have to hold a flank. Or just secure an objective. Sometimes, even if it's not an attacker or defender mission, you're still going to need that situation. Now, you can lock areas down with things like snipers and machine gun teams, such as MMGs or MG42. But the problem with a lot of those teams is that they're a little bit fragile. In the case of sniper, it only takes one or two lucky shots to get rid of them, even if they are veteran. And likewise, in machine gun teams, they can be taken out by an enemy sniper or... They can just be uh, very slow. And if you end up with an attacker defender situation, you want some long range DACA. You want some good fire support that's also able to be mobile. So with these LMG squads, primarily whether they're in a normal mission or they are in a, a defender situation of an attacker defender mission, they'll be able to lock an area down, secure that objective. And it's going to be tricky for anyone to get past them unless they brought some serious... HE or they've got some other way of digging these guys out of cover veterans dug into a nice bit of hard cover is going to be it's going to be a, it's going to be very difficult and if they get into a small arms firefight with enemy units because they've got those two LMGs because they can benefit from the Hitler's buzzsaw rule they're going to have a lot of firepower pouring out of them in addition to these two units we've also got some support teams now we've got a medium mortar which is going to be regular and it's got a spotter. You cannot go wrong with a medium mortar. Frankly, it is one of the best units in bot action. It is an auto include. It's very cheap. It, com it comes with a good HE template with that two inch template. And thanks to the spotter, it can lob shells out of line of sight and still be able to contribute to the battlefield whilst remaining safe itself. Medium mortars, if you're a beginner bot action, just trust me, they're very, very good. And if you're uh, veteran about action, you don't need me to explain this unit to you any further. In a similar vein, we've then got a light howitzer. Now, light howitzers are a personal favorite of mine. They're very similar to medium mortars. They got the HE template, they cost the same amount. The only difference is that you can't get a spotter for the German light howitzer, so that's why we've not got one. But also, they can't phone direct, but they do get gun shields, so they're a little bit more durable. So whilst you won't be able to hide and use the spotter in this case, you will absolutely still be okay to just lob some HE. And the point of these two units really is to throw around some high explosives. 
High explosives are very, very good in bolt action. The more you can cram into your list, often the more competitive it can get. Although you will still need some dedicated anti-tank. For high explosives, they can chuck pins around against medium vehicles. They can still be a threat if they hit that top armor. They can cause all sorts of pins and everything. So having two sources of two inch template HE is, is very, very nice. It is spicy, but it's not overly powerful. You're not bringing anything like a heavy howitzer or anything like that, which can be a little bit of a friend destroyer, especially if you're getting into the game for the first time. So we're flirting with a bit of HE. We've got a couple of small templates here. And so that gives us a bit of power, a bit of teeth to the list, but we're not overdoing it, which helps it stick with that beginner theme of the list. Now, these four units make up the defensive part of the list. The part of the army that is gonna be more focused on holding the line, securing the territory, and just making sure that if I'm on the defense, things don't get past. And if I'm on the attack, that I've got some good covering fire that can soften up the enemy before I go in. The other half of the list is what I would describe as the assault core. The bit that's designed for pushing forward the stormtroopers. Pretty much all of this is designed to be on the attack. All the weapons are focused in that way. A lot of the units are also, of course, more focused on taking the fight to the enemy. Now, starting off here, we've got a fairly classic unit in bot action, a unit of veterans in a truck. A lot of people will swear by putting units in trucks and it's hard to go wrong with a bunch of veterans because it just makes them very, very tough. Now, this particular unit of Grenadier veterans that we've gone for is going to have seven SMGs and two of the chaps are going to have Panzerfaust. Now this gives us a little bit more anti-tank in our army. I can't tell you the number of times when an enemy tank or enemy transport has been rolling up a flank, they've been trying to uh, cause all sorts of problems for me, and all it took was a pair of cheeky Panzerfausts to get the job done. Jump out the truck, put a few fouls to the side, get the job done. So I find that a pair of Panzerfausts is, is kind of the sweet spot. You can load more than two in a lot of squads for the Germans, but I find that two tends to get the job done. Now, the truck, I've actually made a veteran truck, and a lot of people would be surprised by that, but the reason I've made it a veteran truck is it's only a few points more, I think it's like eight points more to do so, but the big advantage is that if I decide to put the veterans in the truck and then put the truck in reserve, I've got a much better chance of bringing that unit in. Once again, I've used this unit many times, and once again, let me just tell you, the number of times when I skimped on the truck, I made it just a regular, and then I had to try roll that morale test to bring it in. Because I'm not American, I've got minus one to my leadership when I'm coming in from morale. I haven't got that good communication lines. So I'm on leadership eight. Well, that's you know, that's barely a 50-50, you know what I mean? Like That's just above if, if I was inexperienced, you know what I mean? But when you go for that veterancy, it just always makes a difference, and... I just the number of times when I've rolled a nine to bring the truck in and my opponent's gone, oh yes, it's not come in. And I've gone, nope, I paid veteran, it's come in and it's made a huge difference. It's been massively impactful. I've also splurged out for the medium machine gun on the truck. Um, I sometimes take the medium machine gun, I sometimes don't um, in this case because I haven't got an armored car in this list. The idea is that the truck is going to act as kind of like a a cheap armored car alternative for me. It's going to be able to drop off the troopers, and once it's done that, rather than just being a box flying around on wheels, it's just basically a dice in the bag, it'll actually be able to contribute, and the medium machine gun should help uh, provide a little bit more fire support to the army. It's kind of like the MMG, it's like, it's like instead of putting an LMG in this unit, I'll put an MMG on the truck. And actually, I think I saved five points doing that as well. Now, the other infantry we've got here are the Volks Grenadiers. These are a little bit of a hidden gem. I don't know a lot of German players that take them, but for me personally, once, well, well, since I've discovered them, and since I've started using them, they're now on auto include in every single one of my lists. What they allow me to do is add some real meat, some real body, some real fodder, some actual volume into what is otherwise a very elite army. If you look, I'm running like, six and sort of seven man sort of squads of veterans that makes up a lot of my infantry but if i come across a soviet player who's just running a full-on tide i'm going to feel very very uh, outnumbered so what these volts grenadiers let me do is get some bulk into my list whilst at the same time 
still being a very aggressive, very assault oriented infantry and coming with a lot of good gear. So what Volksgrenadiers are, is they are inexperienced, but they come with five men as standard and then each one of those men comes with an STG. So they get a lot of assault rifles and a little five man squad. And then what you can, what I've done is I've added five more guys onto each unit. And they've just got rifles. And really the riflemen are just there to pad out the numbers for the squad, give me a little bit of bulk. Five inexperienced troopers are going to get blown away quite quickly. But ten, well, if I lose those fir first five riflemen, I don't really mind. Because really, it's all about the STG party. So each one of these squads is going to be putting out 15 shots at max strength. And because they're full size squads, it means they're... A little bit more like to do as they're told when it comes to sort of morale and orders, you know, to do with the uh, the full strength rule. The other thing about Volks Grenadiers is they've got a little trick up their sleeve. Not only do they get lots of assault rifles, which in a big way cancels out their inexperience because they can move and shoot them without penalty. And so that sort of gets rid of the whole fact that inexperienced troops, well, it kind of soft counters the fact that inexperienced troops have got an inbuilt minus one to hit. But the thing is that they don't necessarily stay as inexperienced. They've got a special rule called mixed quality. And the mixed quality is like the green rule on steroids. When you first take a casualty, what happens is you then roll a dice. If you roll a five or a six, the unit goes from inexperienced to regular. That's just like the green rule, right? Well, wait, because you then, if that is successful, you get to roll another dice. And if you get another five or a six, the squad goes from regular up to veteran. Oh my God, honestly, honestly, let me tell you, let me tell you, this is the, this is the unit I get most excited about in this army. It doesn't happen often. It's happened to me about two or three times. Interestingly, it's happened to me when I've taken this army to some friendly tournaments and it's game changing. It is absolutely game changing. Basically getting a free unit of veterans in your army literally has won me the game on two or three occasions. It's insanely powerful. Now sure, you might not get it. Maybe you'll just go up to regular. That's happened to me a few times and that's very nice because it gets rid of the minus one for being experienced and then it really feels like these guys are running around causing a lot of mayhem. But, but even if it doesn't happen at all, I've played plenty of games where neither squad has gone up. Neither squad is uprated, but it doesn't matter because they're so cheap. This is a 10 man squad with five STGs and it only costs 105 points. That is so good. Taking two of these units is barely 20% of my list and yet it makes up nearly half of my infantry. It's just, it makes it, makes it more than half my infantry actually because that's seven plus six plus six. Yeah, exactly. It makes it more than half of my infantry. So they, get, they bring numbers to the table, they bring DACA to the table, and if you manage to get them to uprate, it makes a huge difference. The final couple of parts for this list is the officer and the tank. Now starting off with the officer, he's a very important part of the assault corps because he goes with the Volks Grenadiers. Now he is just a regular second lieutenant, but... The main reason I'm taking him is because he's cheap and he still gets two snap twos. Because he's German and uh, they get an extra snap two on their officers, it means that he can go with these two units and still get both of them to do as they're told. Now, between the fact that he's also got uh, plus one leadership that he's handing out to people and the fact that the Volksgrenadiers are full strength, normally that means they do as they're told because they've got the plus one leadership and they've got the reroll bearing in mind if they've not lost a casualty so it's not a foolproof system anyone that's won an experienced soldiers before will tell you they often don't do as they're told but between those two mechanics it does tend to keep the troops in line the last thing we've gone for here is a panzer 3 we've gone for the late war variant now in this list i haven't paid for the schutzen side skirts they're purely on there for aesthetic reasons um, I love the side skirts. I put them on all of my vehicles, all my German vehicles. I think they look cool, but I have to be honest, I do, I do rarely pay for them. They're not an overly good upgrade. So we won't dwell on it now. It's a Panzer III. It's got a medium machine gun in the hole. It's got a coaxial medium machine gun, and it's got that sweet, sweet medium anti-tank gun as well. 
Really, that is there to just add a little bit of anti-tank punch to my army. Because otherwise, you know, I'm kind of relying on a few Panzer files scattered around and some HE pins to try and keep the, the tanks at bay. That That's fine, and often you can just pin tanks out. But there's always that situation where you just need to be able to put a medium AT round, some proper big boom boom through the front of the tank and out of the other side. So that's what we've got with this guy. But the thing is, is he's quite cheap. He's only 195 points. Um, you could probably get away with taking him as the light tank with the medium AT gun, but it gets a little bit hairy. When I'm taking the Panzer III in this configuration, it means at the very least that I'm matching a lot of allied tanks that I'm likely to encounter as Germans. You know, those, those Shermans, those Cromwells, those T-34s, those medium tanks with medium AT guns. And, and matching an enemy tank, it's, it's kind of good enough. Sometimes the Germans, I like to, to be always having a bit of a, an advantage in the armor war, but being able to match it is, is good enough. The problem is when you start falling behind. And when, you come, when you've got a medium AT gun, but you're only a light tank, and you're coming across a proper late war medium tank for the Allies, yeah, that, that Panzer III with the light armor, it's, it's not going to last the course. So this is here, where it's cheap enough that it allows me to, uh, to not have to cut corners elsewhere in my list. It's tough enough where it can go toe-to-toe uh, -to -toe with a lot of enemy vehicles. And even if I don't come across a lot of enemy tanks, it's still got two medium machine guns so it can lay down a lot of firepower and contribute to some infantry shredding but that really does cover the whole list a thousand points on the nose we've got lots of infantry some seasoning of support teams a light vehicle and we've even got a medium tank as well now to build this army the way i did it is I started off with the winter German starter set because that came with things like the mortar and it comes with a 48 infantry which is really all you're ever going to need for your standard German army. I mean 48 is going to be enough for you to get the infantry that you want and have a few spare models left over as well so you've, you can always mix your list up in the future. It also comes with the truck and it comes with the officer as well. So I started off with that and then what I did is I added on a Panzer III. Now the Winter German Army does come with a Panzer IV. We'll, we'll circle back around to it at the moment. But I bought a separate Panzer III and I added that on. And then also I've got this Light Howard. So now just to be clear, this isn't the official German Light Howard. So this is actually one that I use for my Japanese army. But it's very clearly a Light Howard. So, but you would have to, um, you'd have to get a Light Howard as well because that doesn't come in the box. Now if you wanted to just build an army using one box that was very, very similar to this, you absolutely could do that relatively easily. Over here, you'll see that I've got a medium machine gun team and I've got a Panzer IV. Both of these units come in the winter German starter set. Now, what you could do is just take out this light howitzer here and put in the medium machine gun. And then you wouldn't have to buy a light howitzer. Medium machine guns aren't as good. A lot of people say that they don't they don't like them. Personally, I've actually always been able to make them work. I know they are sniper fodder, but I've kind of just through force of uh, force of circumstances, just through experience, I've kind of learned to play around snipers. And uh, it's 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 been a rare case for me to lose a, a medium machine gun to a sniper uh, recently. But it's. It's still not great because your opponent is forcing you to adapt your playstyle. They're dictating the flow of the battle. So medium machine guns are fine, but be aware they are sniper bait. Um, and then, of course, you would need to swap out the Panzer III for the Panzer IV as well. Now, the Panzer IV is a few more points. It's actually 40 more points. So if you were... Um, yeah, because it's 235, so it's 40 more points. So you would have to make some tough choices on where you would cut some points out from your list. I would probably say, if you had to twist my arm, I'd probably be like, drop a veteran from each one of these squads. Now that would be uh, 26 points, plus the Panzerfaust on the back here. That would be um, 31 points. And then, 
you'd probably have to drop both of these Panzerfaust as well. Or you drop this one extra man. But if you did do that, you would have a perfectly serviceable list. You just got a little bit less HE and you also got a little bit less infantry and uh, your officers a little bit more uh, vulnerable. But you would then have the heavy anti-tank on the um, on the Panzer IV there. And that might actually go from you having parity with enemy armor to actually exceeding them. Because suddenly they're all running around with medium tanks with medium AT guns. And you're running around with a medium tank with a heavy anti-tank gun. And I suppose that would add a bit of HE back into the list as well. Because you would have the... Um, the two inch template from there so it's actually it's not such a big change you just essentially have a slightly more vulnerable officer and then slightly more vulnerable veteran squads here but it's it would i think it would boil down to six of one half dozen another and it would come down to personal preference but out of those two very similar lists whichever one you decide to go with you are going to end up with a thousand points of germans it will be in a single generic reinforced platoon and you'll have 10 order dice, all of which makes for a fantastic balance take all comers list that you can be confident with in your pickup games and with your games against your friends. But of course, all of this is just like my opinion, man. Let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Are you a fan of the Panzer IV or would you go for the Panzer III? And what's your opinion on the Volksgrenadiers? Would you bother with them? Or would you swap them out for some regular infantry instead? Let us know what you're thinking down in that comment section. And if you enjoyed today's video and you found it particularly helpful, don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe to never miss an episode. Would you like to know more? If so, then please consider becoming a channel member or patron. By supporting the channel, not only will you be doing your part, but you'll also be helping me create more content for your viewing pleasure and unlocking a whole host of perks. You get everything from a badge next to your name, custom emojis, but the big one is access to the Mordian Glory Discord server, an online community with almost two and a half thousand active members. It's always popping off in the MG Discord. We've got channels for army lists, hobbying, tactics, stories, and even a pretty spicy meme section as well. For all you greenhorns that wanted to see the Mordian glory hole, today is a lucky day. And joking aside, I do want to say a massive thank you to all of the current channel members and patrons you guys are amazing truly the lifeblood of the channel i could not do more doing glory full-time without the incredible and generous support of my members so thank you guys so much and last but certainly not least i want to say a personal thank you to all of my top tier patreons these are the war masters the people who have truly gone above and beyond the call of duty so a massive thank you to bon bon vert mad larkin mark panconi rj scorpion swordfish trombone john stubbs nick walsh diesel fox August Vardy and the Tommies. Thank you guys. Your incredible support makes a huge difference and it is a big part of how I'm able to do Mordian Glory full time. But that's all for now. Thank you for watching and of course, as always, I'll see you guys next time.